Good afternoon or morning or whatever the case may be for you. Um, this is Galactic Soul Healing. My name is Sonia. I'm a transpersonal art therapist and energy healer. And today I'm going to be doing an oracle spread on this topic. Um, so it's to do with um, what the galactic consciousnesses have to what they messages they have for us that can help us with our well-being but today we're going to be specifically looking at uh, how they can assist us with grounding and centering what messages they have for us to help us ground our energy and kind of center ourselves so that we um, have less uh, overwhelm less confusion less um, you know not feeling uh, focused and yeah so in the areas of you know like physically emotionally mentally and spiritually okay so these thing these messages will hopefully help and uh, so we're going to be doing four four stacks this is simply the theme okay we're not doing a stack in the middle you can do this for yourself at home as well if you've got some tarot cards that you or oracle cards that you like to use a bit of both um, then you can actually just um, see what me messages come through for you as well um, just to give you so this is a collective spread okay so this is the decks that we're going to be using so it's it's kind of applies to everyone um, or a few people or some people or uh, you know whatever resonates so it's really um, we're going to be using the animal dreaming by Scott Alan Alexander King okay the Isis Oracle by Alana Fairchild uh, the cosmic tarot by Nubert Losh, which is I think it's a fairly old one. This is the back of the box, front of the box there, and it's the Starseed Oracle by Rebecca Campbell. Okay, um, so without any further ado, let's further ado. Let's begin. Don't know if that was even correct expression there. Um, so I'm just going to let me just put this down so you can see. I'm just going to quickly take the decks out. Now, uh, with the tarot, you will have to bear with me. I'm using the major and minor arcana today. So, uh, if we do need, um, you know, if I need to consult the book very briefly, we will do that. Um, I won't go into lengthy descriptions, just so to save time. Uh, because I'm, I do like oracle cards, but I've decided to kind of, um, you know, learn about tarot as well. I do know a little bit, um, but I'd like to kind of go in a bit more in depth. Now, right, so these are the decks. Let's uh, just really quick shuffle, because I have shuffled these previously, but just to kind of get the feel in. Um, and, um, you know, we're just... Um, like to uh, call in any any guides or um, light beings from Sirius, Andromeda, Arcturus, and any beings from the Blue Avian Collective who would like to assist us with some really awesome useful messages that we can um, make good use of uh, that will assist us in our ascension process and you know obviously pertaining to our physical bodies our emotional well-being our mental well-being and our spiritual well-being um, now I'm just going to put these at the back and we'll dish them out one by one so um, just to refresh so I'll have to read this out just in case you can't see at the top we have Syrians then we have blue avians Andromedans and Arcturians so Syrians are from Sirius, obviously. Uh, Blue Avians, um, I'm not quite sure of the planet. Uh, I know they do have big orbs that they utilise. Um, I, I believe they have, um, they do have some dealings with people, you know, beings on Sirius. Um, but yeah, I think they travel around a little bit. Um, Andromedans are from Andromeda, obviously, and Arcturians are from Arcturus. Okay, right, let's get back to this. Now, <clears throat> yes, so we'll start with uh, the Arcturians on the right. Let me cut the decks quickly. I'll do them all now so I don't forget. 
are there we go and I like to go if you've got a few cards it's kind of handy to do the uh, the biggest card first um, so we're going Arcturians on your left uh, blue avian sorry Syrians blue avians and Andromedans at the front there okay so we can pop those back Okay, Arcturians. Right, and Starseed Oracle. Now I tried to get a, a mix of uh, feel cards here. Um, some of them, obviously this one's a little bit more of a, a galactic kind of feel. Uh, obviously the Cosmic Tarot is sort of a bit galactic as well. And it's a bit more like yeah more kind of out of space type of thing now we're going to start with Arcturians so let me grab that now just reminding a little refresher that it is to do with grounding and centering uh, physically emotionally mentally and spiritually right let us see what we have now I'm going to hold these up initially because um, and just for you to have a look because uh, you may actually uh, receive have your own impressions first of all uh, look let's make this a bit easier <laughs> and I am going to um, we're going to go one by one so this one is the seven of swords Okay, now the swords um, represent the intellect, so that's kind of referring to um, mental, like thought patterns. Okay, um, we'll, we'll come back to that in a minute. So that's, uh, and seven is a bit of a number of change. Okay, which is interesting. So we'll come back to the imagery in a minute. Uh, this one. So this is what the Arcturians, the messages that they are kind of having us, having for us. Um, to do with our centering and grounding this one says star family wow that's awesome you're part of a team of souls call in support a team of souls right we'll come back to it now Fairy Penguin, which is willpower. Okay. We're going to talk about these cards with respect to centering and grounding in a minute. Just showing them to you first so that you can kind of get a feel. Um, miracle of Isis. Miraculous healing of the goddess. So that's uh, Isis and her partner husband Osiris. Um, she did, um, I think the, the myth goes that he was cut into little pieces and um, she uh, put him back together basically with, with the help of some other beings, okay. Um, but it's, um, so it's a very healing, it's almost like a soul retrieval kind of thing, right. Now with respect to centering and grounding I'm going to start with the penguin the little finger fairy penguin there uh, is very close to the ground um, and you know, in stature um, but they have a lot of willpower so the Arcturians are kind of saying to us with this little card that uh, we actually need to exercise some willpower given our current lifestyles. We actually need to exercise some um, determination and willpower in terms of uh, making it uh, a bit of a priority and learning how to ground and centre. Um, because sometimes when our lives are very busy um, 
it's just not a priority to do that but they're actually saying that you've really got to exercise the willpower to uh, basically slow down come into yourself center yourself energetically okay that's that's what centering kind of is grounding uh, is really utilizing the earth energies which is really just spending time on the on the earth maybe just standing in bare feet on the earth or even if you can spend a few hours out in nature is really optimal now obviously grounding first is a really good preparation for centering okay um, but they're saying that it's going to take some willpower but but we can do it because basically if the fairy penguins have got willpower to go from wherever they've got to go to wherever you know we can uh, exercise some willpower in uh, disciplining ourselves to take time to ground and center um, now obviously the mechanics of what's involved in grounding and centering will probably become more evident as we go through all of these cards okay now the interesting thing about this is if I was looking at that purely on Im imagery that uh, lady there is literally walking in bare feet on the earth which believe it or not is a very centering thing to do uh, grounding it's grounding okay now these swords around here are you know I mean they could even be representing the uh, the the mental willpower that it's taken her to actually walk through there to get to that point to actually go you know um, but I'm aware that tarot obviously seven of swords does have a different type of meaning but I'm just going purely on, on the symbology at the moment because she's actually out so it looks like dusk evening or early morning or something like that and the sun the moon's there um, unless it's a day daytime and it's a bit cloudy or whatever but the interesting thing too is that she's wearing a cloak um, which is yeah, it's definitely a cloak and it may have a hood or whatever but I don't know it has a kind of a spiritual feel about it to me so it's actually a little hint to sort of say you know what if you can walk barefoot on the earth um, it's actually really good for your spiritual well-being as well and it is because see her like the symbology here this is almost like a sun disc but in a sense it's like if, if we're dealing with spirit okay um, if she's in this environment it's it's easier to be able to communicate with spirit when you're in nature as well so this is why it's it's really nurturing for your spiritual well-being um, the seven of swords I think traditionally can have a bit of a negative connotation um, but I mean the swords are actually stuck in the ground there so it's almost a little bit like you know maybe she's had a lot of difficulty to kind of get there and these represent the things that she's had to kind of overcome in order to just give herself time and she's like literally just throwing them all in the ground and going look that's it I'm actually got to go out on the I've got to go out in nature now um, you know or it can it can represent um, you know I think we're just gonna leave it leave it at that she's also got a little beanie on so I think it's cold and you know what it almost looks like maybe she's actually on Sirius um, but this is, this is a message from the Arcturians but that just reminded me of Sirius but I think it's more about um, about the, the spiritual because she's obviously she could be meditative she's alone obviously so I think that's a bit of a statement to say that you know it's it's really good for your spiritual well-being if you can exercise some willpower and get out and do some grounding on the earth and spend time in nature okay um, yeah we'll leave that one at that for now um, okay so we've got star family Um, so this is about your galactic family you're part of a team of souls call in support so in terms of centering and grounding um, the centering okay it's almost like it's almost like another case of kind of willpower or um, 
some sort of spiritual contemplation to kind of start thinking about yourself as a a part of a, a star uh, family now as part of a galactic family so the idea is that you know your heart is a portal so if you're doing any centering okay a good one to do is literally doing what she's doing here is standing on the earth right and just really sensing your connection to source your connection to the earth and just energetically imagine you know chords coming from both you know to and from both poles if you like both uh, energies and centering in your heart space and that will assist with centering energetic centering within you okay um, there's lots of meditations you can do on YouTube on heart heart centering meditations and all sorts of things okay and sometimes when we are able to do that um, yeah I generally find that I need to go into nature to do that properly because sometimes when you're surrounded by a lot of people it depends on how energetically sensitive you are if you're surrounded by a lot of other people's energies say in a building or in a home or whatever um, I mean obviously if you can take time if you have your own bedroom or something you could go in there and maybe do a meditation to sort of centre okay um, but out in nature is kind of lovely to do that as well um, yeah and yeah and this is also just a little reminder that uh, from the Arcturians that um, you know everyone is going to be needing to learn how to center themselves in this new reality because there's a lot of people there like these are you know uh, I'm not quite sure if they're yeah so it's basically like you know it could be like multi-dimensional selves actually going up and visiting places and things like that telepathically um, right there may be other words for that too uh, not coming to mind right now um, so this one's interesting isn't it the miracle of Isis miraculous healing so centering and grounding um, has the effect of literally like what she's what she did with Osiris is pulling all the bits in okay um, if you if you're centering and grounding yourself it's literally like you're pulling all of your the energy that's been scattered that you've scattered out you're pulling it all back into yourself and starting to feel more real within yourself and more solid uh, more stable more focused um, which which is kind of one of the effects of centering and certainly grounding okay so it has a it has a retrieval of energy effect it's like you um, I literally had an experience of that today like I was feeling actually a little bit um, scattered I've got a few things going on on the home front um, and fortunately I wasn't working today so I was able to just I literally just walked for three hours I was I was able to go barefoot on the beach and walk okay uh, and big difference okay you can experience a big difference if particularly if you're walking barefoot uh, you know obviously if the grounds really rough and you're having issues with that you know just wear shoes but you know maybe sit under a tree or something like that as well and just like meditate for a few minutes and things like that um, but yeah then the other thing too is that uh, <sighs> electromagnetic fields in, in houses and in buildings and things like that and Wi-Fi can I don't know they've done extensive studies on it but uh, given that we do have electromagnetic energy running th with throughout us and around us in our aura okay if you get a I guess if you get a lot of other energetic stuff happening it kind of makes sense that it would uh, cause you to feel a bit uncentered and ungrounded because your energy is kind of being um, uh, influxed there's an influx of other stuff that's sort of happening okay um, now obviously we need to navigate that as part of our lifestyle but it's good to get a balance of obviously we can go into it but if we give ourselves some respite 
it's really important to centre and ground outside of electromagnetic fields if we can. Daily, ideally, uh, you know, the, the longer we can do that, the better in some ways. Um, yeah, so, um, and that all came from that, uh, that feeling of being scattered and confused and un unfocused can be uh, a cause of electromagnetic stuff happening, okay? Um, even things like power lines and power boxes. Um, so that this little symbol here kind of represents that bringing back in. So you could almost, you know, this, this is a couple here, but you could almost like go, well, this is my soul coming back into myself. So, you know, if you're literally like the, uh, you're literally like Isis, that's actually pulling yourself back together, right? And the the Osiris is sort of representing of, of your whole soul, of your whole energy field, rejuvenated and reunited, okay, in its center. And the other thing too is from the earth, you can get a beautiful, uh, a lot of energy coming from the earth. I, I literally felt that today when I, as soon as I stepped onto the beach with my bare feet, I just went, <sighs> you can just feel it. Like, I know I'm not the only one, okay? You can feel the difference. Um, yeah. I literally had to walk through streets and power lines and all sorts of things to get there. And when I got there, it was so different. Um, yeah, and this is the, the willpower. But, uh, you know, this is really nice support from the Arcturians. So like, uh, thanking them for that because, you know, we're not the only ones that are going through this. Um, we are raising our... As we raise our frequency, we do become a little bit more energetically sensitive because we become more attuned to what is uh, good for our field and our body and our form, our spiritual body, more so than we used to, okay, um, when the earth was sort of more like in a 3D kind of vibration, but now the earth is actually moving up in vibration, our whole atmosphere is uh, increasing in, in frequency, okay, so we are becoming um, more sensitive, and this can be a cause of, you know, the, the confusion as well but also this is why it's more imperative now that we use, learn how to ground ourselves and center ourselves energetically okay and making use of the earth here I love, really love that now that feet on the earth that is really symbolic okay if, if you take nothing else from this set here take this you know I'd, I'd say this is the key one but obviously it is going to take willpower for some people to actually do that to push, to make time. Okay, but we can do it. Um, this one's really interesting about the soul, um, that energetic effect that it kind of pulls you back in to your soul when you can connect to earth and center yourself. Okay, uh, and obviously it's a really nice spiritual practice to do that for yourself daily. Um, so I'm going to leave that one on top because that's the key one. Um, now, excuse me tea today hmm I don't have peppermint tea every day but sometimes I just really feel like one now let's go up to the Syrians so we had Arcturians the top of your screen is going to be the Syrians let's see what the beings from Sirius have to say to assist us with our grounding and centering as well now I think it pays to go through these images one by one okay let me just redo now okay so this is from the Syrians we have the three of Pentacles hmm They look like they're building something. Three of Pentacles, which interestingly enough is the suit of the tarot that represents the earth energy. So that is earthing. We'll try and come back to that in a minute. Um, right, we'll come back to the earth and now 
<clears throat> um, we have here Star Brothers Horus Energy Protection, Loyalty, Safety and Trust that is quite a beautiful image you see the two birds that's Horus uh, son of Isis and Osiris I believe Osiris or Osiris um, and there's also actually that's a statue and that's a little bird head there with a the crown thingy on there and which is probably a name for that which I'm not quite sure it'll be some Egyptian term and there's a light in here and a light here and this big sun disk behind as well and this seems to be like a little reflection in there not really sure if that's a reflection maybe um, Horus energy protection loyalty safety and trust okay which is kind of nice because if we're grounding and centering we do want it is a protection for us to do that we will come back to them let's see here deception okay so with respect to grounding and centering okay um, that is actually a little uh, I mean I'm actually glad that they put that in there um, basically um, the less grounded and centered that you are the more likely that you can be deceived because you're because if you're not centered and grounded you're not so much in your true center okay so if if you're uh, really scattered okay your energy is very scattered um, basically you're kind of at the mercy of, of all these different kind of forces that are um, working for their own interests but have no qualms about deceiving you into doing things or buying things being somewhere you know doing whatever okay um, uh, so yeah it's also it's kind of alluding to the fact that also if you are more easily deceived it means that you are more easily overpowered or disempowered okay um, whereas if you are centered and grounded you it's easier for you to be feel empowered and to understand what your power is and um, to have integrity and to not be sway, dis, uh, persuaded um, into things that are not really in alignment with your values beliefs and attitudes towards yourself and life and others okay um, so that there's a, there's a deception aspect to this which is interesting we might come back to that and touch on that again in a minute um, this one let's have a look the goddess of 10,000 names Isis endless emanations of the priestess so that one is talking about um, multi-dimensionality which pertains not only to Isis but to ourselves okay we are multi-dimensional beings now sometimes um, there is a challenge uh, when we have that idea or when we come to that kind of realization is that sometimes that can make you feel uncentered uh, you know it can make you feel like you know there's lots of versions of yourself and like where's my center right um, so but but it comes back to the the heart center so even though you have multi dimensions your soul uh, essence is is one it's at one with everything but it's a um, it's an emanation so these multi-dimensional selves are emanations so this is simply like it's like a replication of your vibration which may have changed form you know it may change it might be it might be in different forms of course and different frequencies but they're essentially um, just like little clones uh, soul clones of yourself okay um, but I mean for us here on earth 
you know like um it's interesting that they put this in here centering and grounding uh, I think it's more a case of like they're saying the importance of the centering and grounding um, has to do with um, basically you have to be very solid in your center okay in order to carry these high vibrations or certainly bring them into your consciousness you've got to be really grounded um, so yeah and certainly they, they might be actually talking about higher consciousness meditation states as well okay so this is sort of the Syrians are kind of alluding to why it's important to ground and center this is the message they messages that they kind of have for us about it is that it's uh, really important because um, but the other thing is that it's understandable I think they're also saying it's understandable that people are going to feel ungrounded and uncentered because they're starting to kind of get a sense of this within themselves but they're also saying that uh, to just be aware that um, that makes it all the more important for people to center and ground okay because that is the th that centering and grounding is really the the only thing that will stop you from feeling uh, confused like you're unfocused you're not yourself and a lot of things okay um, so this one here uh, is alluding to actually I believe centering and grounding they're alluding to it is really good to actually do something practical make something get together with some friends okay because there's three people there because that can be really grounding and centering three is kind of a number of um, enjoyment they're sort of like you know there's there's a project on the way it's happening and it's kind of everyone's happy with it right um, and this is interesting that it's actually earth so it literally looks like um, you know there looks like they're actually building a symbol to do with you know earth uh, centering almost so even if if the only thing you take from this stack is this because um, the other thing too I just wanted to say was that uh, sometimes dealing with people can actually be really grounding for you obviously if you're with a lot of people that are very ungrounded and there's a lot of erratic energy going along uh, going on then that can be ungrounding but if you are you know if you have you know two or three good friends okay and you get together and you do something practical go for a walk or go and do something rather than just um, sitting around and talking about stuff in the air that can become ungrounding because it's more uh, intellectual okay or fantasizing and things like that if you can do something practical while you do that it is more grounding okay um, you know even sharing a meal you know um, so I really like this this is almost like crafting craftsman uh, you know doing some sort of art craft practical gardening carpentry making stuff cooking sewing you know um, anything and they look like they're probably having a bit of fun there as well um, and yeah and that's the other thing too that can be very grounding is having a bit of fun um, now uh, I'm just wondering if anything else so this is the thing here the grounding thing here they're suggesting is that with if you're meditating is to and particularly Horus energy which is an Egyptian energy um, is to kind of just meditate on the idea that you are protected because I have often found that um, if you're doing a spirit guide type of meditation and you can it's actually worth spending time uh, looking for a spirit guide or, or some sort of um, image or sim symbol uh, symbolic representation of a spirit guide that when you look at it you actually feel wow if that was my spirit guide I'd actually feel pretty safe okay that can really help to ground you um, and this one here is uh, and it's interesting that they're called in Horus because um, you know a couple of my really strong spirit guides are 
ancient Egyptian from that thing as well and they're Syrians and this is the other thing like I've said before about Syrians I'm getting chills again is that they are really good for assisting you with really that grounding and helping to helping you to feel stronger in yourself more solid in yourself um, and also the hardcore stuff of if, if you do want to if you've got some deep stuff that you need to work on they're really awesome at that as well um, so this this is alluding to um, protection okay safety protection and safety so if you can really find a spirit guide that um, you know look at look at some pictures google it on YouTube um, look at different galactic um, consciousnesses also ascended masters you could research um, archangels are really lovely at helping people feel really protected okay that can be really grounding because you know what you can do that particular spirit guide if you're going through an ungrounded phase in your life every time you go into meditation you can just basically set your meditation default on okay I'm going to see whoever it is today my uh, protector spirit guide okay um, because that will help to ground and center you in your spirit see this is light here and this is here so this is actually really handy for our spiritual body okay but also has implications for emotional and mental too because it can be really comforting and supporting and grounding this is the other thing comfort and support is grounding as well okay uh, another thing I just want to pop in there is that um, things like a massage can be very grounding because it grounds you into your body okay helps you to feel back into your body again um, even just lying on the floor doing some breathing okay um, there's lots of things look if you google it grounding practices um, you could probably find a whole lot of stuff okay but this is really lovely and really supportive and uh, which is it sounds like a, a contradiction doesn't it to be grounded in your spiritual uh, practice but but you can do it right and it's really lovely um, let's so we touch on deception so we looked at this one about doing something uh, practical which can be grounding doing stuff with your hands um, so the deception is yeah it's really talking about um, the fact that if we are not in our center we are more easily deceived see this guy here he's you know that looks like his heart in there heart light is like centered okay um, you know so it's sort of it's really saying the importance of centering um, and the other thing too is if the more you can center in yourself and trust yourself and be in aligned with what you uh, want to do with your life and your purpose okay um, you do a lot less of deceiving yourself as well you do that a lot less because a lot of people do self -talk, uh, negative self-talk okay where they put themselves down or they um, for instance it might be on this topic of centering and grounding the ego might say well I don't really need to do that I don't have time for it or it's not necessary I think it's a load of crock and ball okay your ego can actually deceive you into thinking that something is not worth the not worth the effort or not even uh, of benefit to you. So it might even just be saying, be aware of your own self deception that will that will talk you out of doing this. It will talk you out of thinking that centering and grounding is important. Okay. I just really love the Syrians. They're so in depth. Like it's almost like look, they've got they've got the defense mechanisms covered. It's just amazing. You know, our inner defense mechanisms are the things that tell us that we can't do what it is that's good for us, or what it is that we want to do. They still tell us. Mm -mm. Um, but you know, that's there's a lot of reasons why that 
happens in a lot of people the majority of people have it okay uh, in varying degrees of course um, but yeah this one is also saying that because we are multi-dimensional uh, beings we are amazing okay we've really got to get a grip on this we really got to get a grip on it so that we can actually then step into our higher consciousness okay because you've got to be at a really centered place in your soul to be able to do that properly okay um so the key one for this i'm going to say is let's put it at this lovely protection because if you've got a spirit guide that will protect you they will assist you uh, in helping you to avoid this deception that goes on because they will be really true to your high, best interest you know they are there for your highest good okay so um, that's really awesome if you can get a really strong spirit guide and you'll find the one that's right for you okay right I really love the Syrians they're so awesome um right blue avians we're going next i do just need to grab a little drinkies oh. okay this is the blue avians the blue avians oh my god there's some beautiful cards here let's have a look this is the first one I just freaked. Look at that. Eagle Spirit. That is awesome. I'm not saying anything for a second to just let you absorb that. That is amazing. Let's look at the next one. And we'll come back to them. Um, this one, interesting, is the Healing Enter the healing enter the chamber of healing healing in the divine chamber of the lady isis so interesting that that is dark we shall return to that in a minute um right let's go like this oh okay we have three of wands is it yep three of wands so that's a lady dancing and interesting thing is she is on the earth and she's connected to source look at that she is actually in a she is centering wow come back to that one now star bathing light body crystal grid transmission activation wow i just realized there's a that is a person lying down there um i kid you not this is the position that i uh, adopt when i do my meditation um i just personally feel you can meditate lying down okay you don't have to sit um though some people say if you sit it's better for chakra energy okay i personally find that if i'm lying horizontally i feel that all my energy can flow better there's none of this my you know like the lower back tension happening okay and there's none kind of your stomach getting crushed while you're sitting right um and it's just a really nice um it's a non-sedentary position which is really nice and relaxing okay and this is star bathing wow that's beautiful the other thing about that position like I mentioned before is it's very grounding so it's a nice combination of, of grounding and meditation this one um, light body crystal grid transmission and activation so one of the benefits of grounding and centering is that uh, you know if you if you're quite grounded generally you have a nice grounded lifestyle and then you go and do some meditation okay um basically if you ground a lot your, your field is clearer okay so it, you're more likely to be able to sense that you have a light body okay because your field is not uh overly got a lot of other energies in it okay that's sort of um 
yeah, confusing your um, your sensitivity and your intuition about what en- the energy is doing in your field. Okay. Um, gris crystal grid transmission activation. Right. So the interesting thing is, it says activation. There's been stuff activated here. So it's actually a beautiful thing happening where uh, when someone's raised their frequency enough, and usually it's, you know, there's some earthing and grounding that's gone on as well over time, um, they can become, uh, they become activated. And often these, uh, these light codes are transmitted, right? And it's, it's, um, it's generally like high frequency uh, waves that we start becoming attuned to and sensitive to okay and we it's literally just a little beautiful waking up process like we're literally asleep there but what we're doing is we're going through a waking up process into the fact that we have a a light body that is um you know part of this um cosmic uh reality okay so it's also interesting to note that that's a very a grounded position to be in if you're doing a light activation you know um, and I really like how that 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 is just re- relaxing and that's the other thing is that um, this whole process of ascension you know it's really just about us coming back into our natural state it's just a process of remembering. So the grounding and centering is the thing that we're probably having a lot of challenge with because uh, there are so many things in our reality currently that are, that are pulling us out of our center, energetically speaking, okay? Even if you sit down and watch a movie, like a two or three hour movie, um, unless you're a very grounded person, if you're not grounded and you go and do that, it can actually not help you okay um i don't want to say we shouldn't watch movies anymore um but in some ways i think we have to really start thinking of ourselves as really as movie stars rather than watching other people on the screen and kind of idolizing them as like oh are they great aren't they aren't they the best you know the thing about that's also about your soul kind of uh your energy is actually um gone out from your center because you need to be actually thinking that about yourself for your soul to kind of come into centered and groundedness okay it is fine to watch a movie but you know just be wary of you know if if you're grounded first that's really awesome you know go out and do some exercise or go out and do something practical and uh, for a few hours or whatever and then maybe that night you could watch a movie and it's I think it's also good to watch movies when you're feeling <sighs> like okay sometimes you go well I just want to watch a movie because um, I'm feeling a little bit emotional and I kind of want to get some support for that or you know um, I don't feel like talking to anyone I just want to watch a movie you know that's fine Um, but then also do some other practical self-care stuff for yourself okay Um, like maybe do some journaling some painting something creative make yourself something um, you know yeah Um, so that's that one so the blue avians and this one's interesting because isn't that interesting that is literally a type of healing as well because it's actually a soul it's actually like a galactic soul uh, healing thing to go through that process and you know maybe that's what happens when we go in here the other thing about this that I wanted to say this healing chamber okay is that um, in terms of grounding and centering this is uh, quite reminiscent or very much sort of like um, some of these other cultures like uh, that practices of, of shamanism and things like that where they um, actually it's sort of an initiation I think but they but it also helps the person to kind of really big strengthen their soul okay so literally they go in the earth and they get buried and they have a little straw that they breathe through so this would be a little bit like going into the dark earth 
okay it's going into the the uh, the depths okay uh, the unknown um, but the interesting thing about that is it's a little bit like that feeling when you close your eyes to do meditation okay um, if you're centered and grounded okay the darkness sort of becomes like a comfort or a friend not as in the evil darkness okay you just know that if you close your eyes that you're still there fully okay and that's that can sort of help with um, centering or and grounding because you if you're relaxing and you're sleeping this is probably almost almost uh, symbolic of sleep is that and it's probably alluding to the fact that we need to get plenty of sleep we may need more rest because as we know sleep is rejuvenative and it is healing so this is a message that I'm getting now is that yes it is a this is an illusion to it is alluding to the fact that we really need to when we get sleep we need good quality sleep we need to have uh, electrical devices off okay ideally we need to have done some grounding stuff in the day we need to be well hydrated we need to have had exercise and good food so that we can sleep well okay because that does help you with grounding because as you know and I've experienced this uh, when you have sleep deprivation it is very ungrounding because as you know you don't feel like yourself and you feel like you know you're half asleep but that you've got a lot of this sensory stuff that you've got to do and you don't feel like you're in your body because what's happening is that when we sleep you know our astral body leaves us so the, the weird thing is that even though that we're we're sleeping say we're in this position here uh, part of us is not grounded our body is grounded but our spirit is not grounded because it's um, going into other realms okay astral realm and maybe other realms too with some people um, so so the thing about sleep is that um, yeah we it's 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 really important for grounding um, because our bodies rejuvenate okay but our our sometimes yeah and sometimes it can take a little while if your if your spirit or your astral has been doing a lot of stuff being really active it takes a little while to feel grounded in your body and wake up in the morning because you know I've experienced that too and a lot of people a lot of other people have it's like you know you wake up and it's like I don't really feel like I'm awake yet even like an hour later it's like I'm not actually fully in my body yet okay um, so the importance of sleep is what they're alluding to for grounding because there are a lot of people around that are up till two in the morning on a regular basis and then they expect themselves to do a normal day the next day okay um, we need to be getting enough of this isn't that interesting that is almost a double from here and the blue avians are really awesome because oh my god see this that is literally a bird in the blue avian uh, area and it is an eagle and you know what they're really good at the the blue avians are awesome for big picture stuff so they're, they're kind of like and this is what eagles do too they have a really big perspective so you know like if your um if your soul resonates with the idea of eagle or as an animal spirit guide okay um this is the other thing too some of these um animal spirit guides you can appeal to is the owl for helping you to get rid of any deception that's going on for yourself okay uh and even between your ego and your higher self you don't want to be too much you don't want to let your ego deceive you completely uh, and this is the little fairy animal spirit fairy penguin okay so here we have the eagle in the blue avian section um, that is alluding us to the spirit um, and it's just really important for our spiritual well-being which is basically what the Syrians are also saying here with this one about the spiritual pr protection okay and um and also even with this alluding to the lady in the cloak because she's you know that could be quite a spiritually com contemplative um 
walk that she's doing there. Spiritual well-being uh, is important. Will be assisted if you can center and ground yourself. Okay, uh, doing some meditation like this in that position would be lovely. Um, getting enough sleep and really honing in on the fact that it's going to be rejuvenative for you, healing. Um, you know what happens in um, sleep? I think it's it's one of those really deep sleep states. Your cells literally rejuvenate, so they literally heal themselves. Okay. Um, and this one, that is really interesting because that is almost like a yoga pose. And I'm glad I pulled that out because yoga is really grounding and centering. Uh, that is literally like some of the things I do um, most nights. I try and do some stretching. And, you know, this one. You know, you really kind of put, pull your arms back and it's really centering, uh, stretching that solar plexus and the heart. Okay, that's the other thing too, is they're actually alluding to uh, body positions. They're alluding to dance and movement here. They're alluding to physical exercise, body movement. Okay, uh, this is not only uh, grounding, it is energetically centering. Remember I mentioned before about that source up here you know, divine source spirit and also the ground, beautiful electromagnetic energies of the earth. Uh, and we're centering in the heart space there. And that, the three, once again, is, um, you know, it's a, uh, it's a happy, content number, okay? Um, and, you know, she's actually doing something and engrossed in that and centered. She's really centered there. That's so awesome like we haven't that's really awesome like I can't believe how awesome that is uh, look we've had craft we've had walking on the earth right these are all really grounding things and we have you know dance or movement using the physical body exercise I mean this is the key one but sleep is you know really important and it's actually saying that even though this is a very looks like a very physical thing it's actually quite spiritual because what's going on in the inside is a spiritual connection between the earth and the sun and it's also alluding to actually doing things with um, sacred intent uh, which is alluding to this it's like enter the healing chamber so enter the chamber the healing the new way of doing something which is spiritual it has a spiritual flavor now everything needs a spiritual flavor okay even if we're just sitting on the earth doing something even if we're having a picnic you know out in nature we just need to take some moments during that time to just go look yeah i feel really connected to the earth and to the sun right now just make it a spiritual thing okay and this is oh, this is just a beautiful Bilavian thing they're just saying yeah it's actually really a, it's a beautiful spiritual practice to ground and center yourself okay because it will assist you to be able to go into these uh, transmission uh, the light body activation if you can ground and center in a beautiful spiritual practice way and bring or cooperate into your daily life it will assist you with your uh, activation okay um, wow that's just so awesome i'm going to leave that as the main one you know what it's so awesome the cosmic tarot has come through today look i'm putting these at the main ones that's just awesome oh thirsty again <laughs> okay that's really funny then because i just kind of felt like a bit chill chillsy but I know some of the blue avian I have felt quite close to them sometimes and I know sometimes their energy is just like really like yeah you got to do this you know <laughs> I could just kind of feel that coming through as I was kind of tying it all together and they were like yeah yeah <laughs> um, Andromedans on the bottom here we go the stack but it's just so awesome I really love them now for the Andromedans, it's really interesting that we have a mature female, the Queen of Swords. Okay. 
just introduce that and then we'll come back to it the queen of swords is a little bird there a couple in the background um yeah right queens are traditionally um mostly like a water element but the swords uh, represent the air element okay and also the intellect so it might have something to do with a mental uh, approach intellectual mind thing that we have going on towards uh, centering and grounding now well we had this one before in a reading trust the timing trust the wave you came in on time is not running out I think that might even be speaking of if you're feeling uh, you know mental confusion and stuff like that and you're a bit disillusioned um, don't worry um, particularly if you can start doing this it will assist you with this uh, trusting and helping you to feel that time is not running out because as you as people get more and more maybe into confusion overwhelm and uh, scattered disassociated states right in their thinking and feeling um, the more they're going to feel like time is running out but so they're saying the opposite will happen you won't feel like time is running out if you can center and ground yourself which is essentially another two key words that I'm going to put in there that they also just coming through to me to say now is slow down it's almost like the faster you go the more you're going to think there's no time left okay it's a case of slow down get present center and ground and give yourself time to do that daily if you can well, I almost say, almost say it's essential to do it daily and for increasing amounts of time you might start off maybe in the morning you do it or in the afternoon you do it or in the evening or in midday or whatever but then maybe down the track you might go well look I think I need to be doing this now I need to center and ground myself properly I need to spend at least half an hour at these two times of the day and then it might be well you know what every every second or third day I really need to spend a couple of hours doing this and you know what it's, it's fine okay um, centering and grounding I was talking about now possum opportunity opportunity so it's almost like saying take any opportunity that you can uh, to both find out about different strategies of centering and grounding other than the ones we've mentioned today there are a lot more um, and also take the opportunities to actually do centering and grounding okay possum opportunity it's cool now we have divine sun child blessings of the sun falcon interesting I think that is supposed to be Horus uh, and maybe that's Osiris I think these might be a couple that's Isis of course um, yeah unless that's that might be Ra Ra Osiris Horus and Isis um, interesting thing is there that there's a, a sort of a disc shape there I don't know if you can see that and she also has a disc there um, so just the blessings of the Sun Falcon so centering and oh just realized um, the key word there is Sun sunshine Um, if you can get yourself um, because that hasn't really been mentioned we talked about the earth we talked about spirit but sunshine and sunlight okay daylight um, it's very good for 
establishing body rhythms, biorhythms, and grounding. Okay, um, because I don't personally know any shift workers, but I think shift workers um, sometimes experience um, uh, there's there's some mental and, and emotional effects of being a shift worker. In other words, if you don't um, get to experience any sunlight, right, you literally um, sleep in the day and you're up at night, okay, over extended periods, obviously there'd be respite if someone was working in that area, but if you didn't really have any respite, okay, you would become a bit ungrounded or you wouldn't feel um, centred because there's something about, uh, we're actually designed to, our bodies are designed to take in sunlight okay which are which is essential for well-being and studies have shown that there's a vitamin I think it's vitamin D that um, really that we get from the Sun that assists our, our mental and emotional well-being and also some I think it's energy processing as well it assists with that um, metabolism and things like that but um, yeah you might want to vitamin, research vitamin D or just you know benefits of sunlight because it's saying blessings of the Sun Falcon and just because basically the, the the imagery that was just alluding to me there it's almost like you know spirit's just kind of wanting me to just look look at that uh to just really emphasize that sun um and it's definitely you know the sun child um the other the other beautiful thing is it so it is very centering and very grounding if you can go out in nature in the sunlight and just try to forget all of your adult worries and concerns and just really kind of look at the environment and just kind of take it in as it is uh, and just kind of really tap into maybe a time when you were a child when you were out in the sun and you were playing because you can literally get to a really beautiful meditation with that and that is the sun child Okay, and that is a beautiful centering and grounding thing for you to do. And and obviously if you have little kids, it's much easier to do that because you're just sharing that with them, okay? Uh, really beautiful, and I have seen some people on the beach with young children and it just warms my heart. It's really lovely. And um, they're playing with their kids. Um, but you don't have to have children to experience that, okay? Um, and, yeah, it's just saying really connect with the sun too, which is another part of nature. And the other thing too that uh, these are, you know, Osiris and uh, Ra, um, they're actually spirit beings that you can appeal to for assistance. So, for instance, um, if if you were um, having trouble getting out in the sun, or maybe you have you know, addictions with gaming and stuff, and you don't actually get much sunlight, um, you could actually start just um, appealing to Ra in your meditations. Just go, look, Ra, I really need to get some sunlight. Can you kind of help me with that? somehow um, you know because they're really powerful spirit beings um, so that's the blessings of the sun child and you know the time is not running out that's another thing too if you can get into a little bit of a childlike thing phase children are also very good at being present they're not thinking about the past and not thinking about the future they're thinking about right now okay um which is also a thing about slowing down. Um, and that's actually some of the, the most lovely parents are the ones that can actually bracket out all that stuff and they're able to just be really present in the moment with their kids. They're not thinking about uh, what happened yesterday. They're not thinking about what they want to do later on in that night or the next day. They're not stressing about work, okay, because they're in the room with their child and they can just really be there okay and then you'll definitely feel like time is not running out because the more present you are in the moment the more uh, appreciation you have of of the now because if you think about it if you're in a, a scattered uncentered state you're just thinking about the past you're thinking about the future you're going boom 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 what little drama can I whip up next to div divert my attention from being present and from centering myself Because all of this stuff, past and present, is not, you know, if you're just a having anxiety about it and behaving like 
from those patterns that you've generated from the past if you're just reacting from them if they've been dysfunctional and you're stressing about the future okay mostly if you're in that you would not be experiencing much centeredness if you can go out in nature of course that helps to combat that and ground you okay but you still might have to do some centering as well to come right back in uh, energetically but there's a real connection between well-being mental and emotional well-being okay there's a connection between that and your energetic well-being okay this is where the energy body this is why this blue avian uh, card here is referring to the light body so it's saying it's good for your energy body to ground and center yourself and not only that it helps you grounding and centering helps you to have an awareness of it but it also has beautiful implications for your mental and emotional well-being okay uh, as well as your spiritual well-being and your physical right now so that's the thing about being present grounding and centering is about being present okay which is a really beautiful tip from the Andromedans I really like that and getting some sunlight which is really awesome um, taking every opportunity to do some centering and grounding okay and or finding out about it okay um, and maybe even talking to some people about it now let us return to the Queen of Swords she looks well being the sword uh, she is a very intellectual uh, capable woman um, most likely have masculine and feminine uh, qualities uh, probably a pretty good balance okay um, and I'm not quite sure what this is back here that is an image from the lovers card um, and I think what we're going to do is we're just going to pull out of there what's going to be relevant for this so given that we've been talking about being present and getting some sunlight and taking every opportunity it's only logical really in my mind that she's actually there with that sword as a bit of a representation of this earlier card here which was to do with willpower and discernment that really intellectual mind discernment about what needs to be done in order for uh, for a person to acquire a state of being present and also what it's going to take to get off of the uh, gaming computer and get some sunlight and also uh, you know what it's going to take to create opportunities for that this is about the the mental um, the uh, having the dis the what am I trying to say the it is the willpower but it's the understanding it's it's the mental reason why so it's the intellectual understanding that goes into why this needs to happen and the Andromedans are, are very organized um, highly evolved beings okay um, yeah so that's intellectual um the interesting thing is she actually looks quite composed um and yeah i'll just hold that up closer she actually kind of looks um kind of content but like an inte in an intelligent way she looks intelligently content. Um, I don't know if this is uh, something that represents her past because it's sort of behind her. Um, it's almost like, you know, if this is young love, it's almost like, okay, so she's representing now as a mature uh, woman. But, you know, it could also be that uh, this is a representation or a symbolism of her uh masculine and feminine aspects that are now coming to balance and if we're talking about masculine and feminine coming into balance 
That is centering, isn't it? Um, which I think what they're alluding to is um, it's almost a kind of alluding to the divine feminine. That the divine feminine uh, is tapping into your divine feminine if you can certainly ground and get some earth connection. Because the earth is very receptive of our energies, but also very giving. Okay. Um, but, yeah. It's uh, it's kind of an empowering... Uh, it looks like a position of empowerment. I think they're saying, yeah, if you can centre and ground, okay, you will feel more in control. That's the word I was looking for. You'll feel more in control of your uh, mental... Uh, your, your thoughts okay you feel more in control of your thinking patterns because she's representing the intellect here but she does look mature and in control so the advantage of centering and grounding is that if you can find opportunities to get your sunlight and being present okay uh, it will pay off because you will feel that you've, you've, you've got a grip on things okay which I think this is what they're sort of saying here. Um, yeah. And, you know, they don't really, I mean, they don't really want humans to be confused and, you know, upset and um, unfocused and disempowered. You know, that's not what these benevolent galactic consciousnesses want. They want us to be, you know, together in ourselves and with others obviously but you know energetically grounded with the earth centered between source and the earth within ourselves and our energy body having healthy happy lives okay um but that also looks like it's sort of saying that it's going to take like this word here it's going to take some willpower and some um <laughs> it's literally like she's got a sword there which literally like cutting out some things that's what they're just saying to me now like literally to, to get some sun time right you might have to cut out some other stuff in your life literally with this sword i'm not saying do anything violent okay it's so metaphorically cut back on something so you can get more of this so you can find the opportunities the opportunities may only come if you can cut back on some other things that you're spending time on okay um and that is probably the my the the thing that they finally wanted me to i just felt like i had to keep talking until they finally got through what they wanted to say but yeah it was cut it's cutting back on other stuff that's stopping us from doing this at the moment okay um an opportunity yeah you can certainly see how they're all linked like we've really got to find some opportunities um to you know learn how to center and ground which help us to be present as well and really help us to feel like we've we've got a grip on our lives and our purpose and our physical emotional mental and spiritual well-being because that's what these um you know consciousnesses want us to experience um that is it folks um so this is the you know we had just the little grounding tips here you know, we had the um, moving, dancing exercise on the earth, okay, uh, doing something, making something creative, walking barefoot on the earth, which is just awesome. And basically, this now I realize is symbolizing the fact that we might need to cut back on some of the other things that we're doing. And my guess would be mostly it's going to be cut back on screen time so that we can do some of these other things okay so that's probably it in a nutshell um i mean we had some other really beautiful cards here too about uh you know this one's about learning to be present which is very grounding centering uh the thing about getting a really strong spirit guide which is beautifully grounding for our spiritual well-being um and being part of a star family which is also um it is it is uh, grounding as well, you know. That's it's grounding to be 
to realize that you have a star family and this one position here about lying down uh, the star bathing okay which is a lovely meditation grounded position to meditate in okay uh, we had that and then we had with the animals we have the willpower of course uh, I really love how the Syrians are in here about deception just be aware of uh, when you're trying to deceive yourself into not doing some centering and grounding and when other what other things are around you that are trying to take you out of that as well um, and the fact that centering and grounding is really good for our spirit okay and we also had opportunity we're gonna have to make opportunities for it okay and last but not least let's go with the Isis cards um, I think this is a nice mix of messages we've had today and I'm just really grateful for this I'm getting learning getting getting tips as well um, miracle of Isis so this was the one about really if you can center and ground it's about pulling on pulling in your energies and not feeling so scattered okay and uh, unfocused that's what the one of the benefits is of centering and grounding um, and the other one is to keep in mind that um, even though we may have multi-dimensional aspects that that in itself uh, shouldn't be ungrounding but it, it emphasizes the fact that we need to uh, really center and ground into our soul so that we can step up into higher consciousness and uh, experience that as part of our evolution okay um, and of course the healing chamber which was to do with sleep uh, the importance of sleep so that helps us to ground get into our natural biorhythms and it helps us to uh, feel more centered as well because we need uh, our bodies need to rejuvenate during the sleep state um, and also this beautiful divine sun child which is saying you know the sunlight um, is really important as well and you know that's that's quite particularly relevant coming from Egyptians because Ra is a very powerful uh, being the god of the sun or sun god um, so like I said if you're having trouble getting enough sunlight appeal to Ra for some assistance um, okay so that's it folks we've had galactic oracle messages for well-being particularly pertaining to uh, grounding and centering tips from the Syrians blue avians Arcturians and Andromedans thank you for listening um, that was quite long but um, Hopefully we got some information from that. Thank you.